Ah, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, we're uh, just checking out things. Sorry about this. <laughs> All right, so we'll just adjust there, there that. There it is. Okay, so there we go. Look there at, we go. There. All right, so we got to adjust this tripod. We're going to fix this around. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to live. We'll move up. We'll move it. All right, we good? We good there? I think we're good. All right, so welcome everybody. And so let's, let's go this way. Let's go here. All Come right. on in. I think uh -huh. they're, they're seeing me. Oh, really? Yeah, it's using, it's using that. Oh, thing. sorry. We'll, we'll switch. Uh, how do we switch that? Okay, sorry. Well, you, can, you can watch the chat. Well, we do switch it. Can we see it now? Yes. Okay. You, want, you, want, you want me to take it? I can take uh, it. Yeah, you got that, all right? Yep. Okay. I can read the... Okay. Uh, all right, cool. All right, so sorry the... about this. So welcome, everybody, to live. Uh, sorry about that. A little rough go. I want to thank Corey from My Life and Gaming. Let's turn around and so yeah. thank him. Hi there. Corey, that's right. He <laughs> is came by, and I am honored to have him as a guest and a welcome guest. I want to celebrate his channel. If you haven't checked out My Life and Gaming, it is a wonderful, well-polished channel. Check it out, and just want to thank him and, and want to praise him for helping me on this live stream. Second live stream I've ever done, and I'm happy to answer any questions, and we'll go from there. So... All right, shoot away the questions. Collect yeah, yeah. All right. Um, nothing yet. Okay. But... <laughs> All right. So uh, real quick, I'm going to be showcasing some things that I got. I have to grab a paper. I totally forgot the paper. Uh oh. You got 108 people watching. Oh sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, sorry. Uh oh, look at this. All we right. got some boxes so, here. Some good stuff. All right. All right. First donation. So. All right. This is an amazing donation from EV. Ford 45 contacted uh, another person, and this is Japanese retro game, Retro Kakaricho JP. Hopefully I'm saying it right. If I'm not, I apologize. This is a donation. I'm opening it up on live. Here we go. And I think I know what it is. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. But I don't know everything that's in here. I'm excited to see what it yeah. is. I... I don't think I told me. Oh boy. Oh boy. Holy cow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the shape of that. This is a Famicom disc system and it came with a game. And anyway, it's amazing. I don't know the name of this game. I don't know the uh, English interpretation, but something to play on. And what's cool about this, oh my gosh, the shape of this here. I wish I showed this to you. It's coming. It's coming. I'm trying to be careful here. <laughs> I really appreciate it when a fellow collector packages something. And it is a Famicom disc system. We'll take it out of the package here. Oh, wow. It's boxed and everything. Yeah, box and everything. Check that out. Is there any comments? Is there comments? Oh, there, you know, there's comments going like crazy. Okay. Now, yeah. now it seems like the comment there is. Okay. Asking who it's from. All right. We got a five dollar donation. It oh, says, "What you. game in your collection would you love an HD remaster of?" HD remaster, Berserk. <laughs> yeah, I'd love a, a HD remaster of Berserk. You know, they did a Robotron on Xbox 360. I loved it. It's only exclusive on that, and it went offline, and you can't get any more Berserk. Uh, another one. Uh, I like Pitfall. Like they need an HD remaster of Pitfall that doesn't suck. Yeah, so I don't know. I kind of like the the uh, PS1 version. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. All right, so Famicom Disk System. I'm gonna open this up here. Oh yeah. All right, look at that. Great. Does it have a new belt in it and everything? I do believe. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, I do believe it was sent, tested, redone. Very excited about that. Very cool. Nice shape. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Very cool. I'm going to keep that out because I'm going to be playing that. And real quick to show you, if you don't know what this is, I'm going to show you. So this is the ABS, and this is a uh, budget FPGA. And this is probably the least expensive way to play this that looks pretty yeah. good. Do you agree? I mean, you... Oh, yeah, yeah. You are, yeah. The ABS is great. Yeah. Retro USB, and I, I think it's great. Love the design of and it. So you stick the, the adapter into here, 
and then you can, you know, have it kind of fits a little awkwardly. Yeah. But I mean, you can't close it's the top, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's a little snug. And so, yep. And then you can play it on your television. It looks great. There's also the analog uh, mini, the uh, NT mini. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's pretty fun too. All right. All right. Any questions? Shoot them away. Like I said, I'm just glad. To oh yeah. The questions have been going. I just like, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you when you're yeah. going. So, uh, do you collect full sets or just region exclusives for any systems? Full sets. Should I show them the new game room? You can. All right. You can, but let's, let's we can do it. Unboxing first. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tease a little bit. Okay, some some of you oh, guys want to. Oh, someone see wants to see a better view of your arcade marquees. Oh yeah. Specifically, yeah. I mean, I think that we need some. Yeah. Golden Axe. Yeah, I'm I'm a Sega guy, so oh, go. Golden Axe and Outrun. He's welcome here. I knew I liked him when he said Sega. <laughs> when he came over and he said he liked that golden axe. Like yeah. That. That's one of my that's one of my most wanted arcade PCBs. So I have a question to people watching this. So uh, I hear there's a sound bite in Golden Axe that reminds me of a sound bite from Conan the Barbarian. Does anybody know if it, that's Yes, that? I think that it is. I think that all the uh, like the moans and dying sounds are from uh, uh, Rambo, First Blood, oh, okay. and uh, and Conan the Barbarian. That. Yep. All right. There was an easier way of opening this, and I made it as difficult as possible. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. Here we go. What is this? What is this? Ah. I don't know. Ooh. Right on that. 77. There it is. There it is. It's Great design on that, you know. I'm, yeah. And you know, I anything with wood paneling, I'm on board. So, all right. So we'll put this down there. Wanted to definitely see this, unbox it. My first new product live unboxing, and then we'll get to the gamer. Many other questions. Um. Not yeah. I mean, there's there's been lots of questions, but it's going so fast. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if I I don't want to to scroll up because I don't want to. Screw it up. All right. How close are you to having a complete NTSC Atari 2600 collection? Well, I'm far away just because there's like 10 games that are like thousands of dollars. And so it's really hard to like collect 2600 these days because all the big collectors have the rare stuff. The rare stuff is within, you know, other, other rare games of other consoles are in the thousands. Mm -hmm. Rare Atari games are in the hundreds, if not less. And so there's like... Video Life is a good example. You know, that's like I, I don't know how, who have who would have that for sale, let alone at an affordable price. So there's many of the high end like uber rare games I'm missing, but I would have most of the common stuff. And so anything like R8 or less, because it's based on a 10 point scale from R1 mm -hmm. to R10. I have most things R8 or below, and then some of those are missing boxes for and stuff. And so if you look at the wall here, anything I'm missing, like Chase the Chuck Wagon. It'll have that, uh, you know, master master builder. I have a lot of loose carts and stuff, and so I'm always trying to look for rare box stuff like Panda. Panda games are really hard to get complete, and so I'm missing several with boxes. Um, checkers. So like Sears did a series of games, and some of these are really hard to find box like Math Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jay, by the way, for your cart. And uh, Othello, like the Sears version. It's hard to find a box. So, yeah. I saw someone ask earlier. I saw a Buffalo Gamer. I only saw, I noticed Buffalo because yeah. I'm from Buffalo originally. Okay. I uh, asked what you thought about Night Trap on the Switch. Night Trap on the Switch. I haven't played it, but I support it. I think it's great that they're bringing these classics to new consoles and to pretty much let new players appreciate it. I mean, Sega CD or 3DO, a lot of people don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, bringing that. These classic games onto a new console that's great I, I think that's amazing uh, I support uh, and limited run games is doing a pre-order on that still Ooh. correct uh, yes yes uh, Chris Thompson had a 499 donation oh, says, I have no question but thank you for all the videos you do and the metal Jesus rocks channel well thank you so much now right. enjoy collecting retro games oh well thank you so much I I really love video games it's my <clears> passion I love talking about games. Happy to answer any questions. Again, uh, really honored to have Corey from My Life in Gaming here. <laughs> and again, uh, if people want to donate through PayPal, that's fine as well. Uh, you know, One-time donation to that. My, my PayPal link is in the description. So anyways, if you want to enjoy this, this is great. All right. 
So here's the controversial controller of Hypercan, okay? I'm gonna be testing this in a future video. And so I'm just looking at it initially. This is the first time I've held an actual new 2600 con controller by Hypercan. It doesn't feel too bad. This stick seems a little bit long, but I, again, I'd have to compare it. Um, I have one right here, look at that. So yeah, it's a little bit longer. It's kind of hard to see there. And so the, oh, length, wow. the length of that may actually cause it to be more prone to break. I'm going to test that in a future video. I'll try to do an endurance test with it, not try to break it. But um, I'll do some, some testing and stuff with it. So far, I like the feel of it. I like that the corners are shaved off, too. Anyways, Hyperkin likes to do that, like kind of do the, that, yeah. that corner angled thing. It feels really good, too, when you put your, your, your thumb palm right there and do that. That's sweet. All right, other questions. Does it feel like a flashback joystick? Um, no, no, it actually feels pretty good. I, I, I've, I've heard that they're working on a better version of this controller, but this feels pretty good. I'm gonna have to test it though, endurance wise. So, all right, let's go into the game room. He's, uh, I, I promise that. So, all right, follow me. Let's do all this. Right. All right. All right, on to the game room. All right, so real quick, this took. This took like multiple days of cleaning this, so come check it out. Come check All right. It out. All right. This is a new improved Room of Doom. So come on in here. All right. Here we go. Here it is. It's clean. It's as clean as it gets. <laughs> and so um, what I've done is I had this, these racks. I've lowered these racks. I put some of my rare systems up on top. And so happy to talk about any of this. I have all my games that aren't out boxed or, or organized, but you can see across, you can look from one side to the other. I have, this is all new, okay? There you got a $10 donation from Game Dad said, uh, do you have your collection insured? Yes, to the house. So yes, that's a short answer. So fingers crossed, no fire. Do you have a recommendation for a place I could get my collection insured though? Uh, I think you can get it through farmers. Uh, getting a value on things is, is tough sometimes. It's easier to have it as like personal property through your house insurance. And so the problem is though, my stuff is insured probably a lot less than what it's worth. That I'm just being honest. Like I, you know, I've lived in this house 15 years and so it's, it's probably worth a lot more. So yeah, I don't think about the value. So <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, real quick, I want to have point to this thing. I found out information. I, I never knew about the Mask of Zorro R-Zone. I never found out information on it. And I wanted to have it displayed because I didn't know anything about it. I found some information yesterday. So the Mask of Zorro for the R-Zone was pulled from shells to get <laughs> make space for the Gamecom, of all things. And so it's really hard to find, I guess. And so <laughs> that's the, for all the R-Zone collectors out there, there's your rare one, Mask of Zorro, and for all, all 10 people that bought it. So yeah, uh, happy to answer any questions going around the game room. Uh, I can show, we can show you the backside, but this is as clean as it is. I have a new place set up here. Got my Neo Geo. Um, I have a quest of beating Magician Lord. Really tough game, I beat it once. Notoriously tough. Yeah, yeah. notoriously tough. Beat it once with some friends. Want to beat it again, that's why it's out there. You're using a... Uh... Do you prefer the kidney bean? Yeah, the bean style controller, uh, yeah. controller over the Yeah, so the, the reason why is I can put my thumb on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I know it's kind of dim in here, but yeah, I just wanted to show that. It looks pretty good on here. Yeah. My Vetrex with my uh, controller that was given to me by Chuck Van Pelt. He modified oh. the Sega Genesis uh, Vetrex. That's cool. I put a little mm -hmm. logo on it. Chuck, I have this. I have the, the arcade stick. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck did these a long time ago. I don't know if he does them anymore, also known as a Recycled Gamer. He also did a nice Vetrex Sega Genesis controller. He also did them in Super Nintendo as well. So, yep, Chuck's a good friend of mine. Chuck is also uh, one of the orig original organizers and organizer of the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And so he does a lot of work for, for PRGE. And if you're watching this, Chuck, hey, man, that was a little shout-out for you. Thank you. I appreciate all that you do. <laughs> Have you tried the Neo SD flash cart do not have it it's uh still kind of expensive it is then they have a new version coming out too that's going to have yeah. as like four has four slots you can that are permanent yeah. 
and one that refreshes every time you yeah, turn on the system. Tough. I wanted to do that. And just it's just one of those things. Like I'm just no. I mean, I there's things I want, and then there's like I'm on a budget like everybody else. Everybody sees this collection like, well, you know, you could sell stuff and get stuff. That's true, but my end goal is a museum, and so yeah, if you have an end goal of a museum, you're not selling things that you want in a museum. And so like I think it's easy when you see all this stuff too to think about like yeah. how much how long. This has taken. I mean, it's oh, taken yeah. like a good portion of your life. Yeah, it's uh, 25, 30 years. Yeah. And, and so I didn't get this just clicking on eBay. Like a lot of it I got in person. Uh, I did have some wonderful donations. I want to thank people such as EB445. Uh, he donated some crazy stuff um, among some other many other people. And just people commenting. I really appreciate it. Again, I know there's a lot of comments going on right now. Again, uh, Corey's going to be my wing person. So thank you so much. All right. Other questions? Um, do you own Power Strike 2 on the Master System? No, I don't. I have Power Strike 1. Don't have Power, Power Strike 2. Well, let's show you the backside. It's all clean. So we'll definitely, uh, again, you know, we'll do more of these videos just, uh, just showcasing some stuff right now. Yeah. So this is, um, this has all been reorganized. I have some, like, these are, like, reissued tabletops. They're not my favorite, but it looks good on a shelf and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Yeah. Uh, original Qbert, uh, tabletop. Here's something you don't see a lot. This is a Mortal Kombat control pad. And so what this is cool is that, you know, a lot of people had a hard time doing all the moves for Mortal Kombat. So this comes with its own cartridges. And so you use these with the controller and it has pre-programmed moves in it. And so <laughs> you can like pull off all the crazy moves for people. And it was kind of like a great cheat device. Anyway, it's thought that was really cool. Thought it was neat that it had, you know, a couple, um, uh, different different fighters. So, anyways, thought that was kind of neat. All right, Bentley Convention. All right, my laser act. Oh, you got a fifteen dollar donation oh. saying, um, "What was the last game to make him to make him Stimpy launch?" Oh, is Stimpy that, launch! Oh my gosh, is that a, is that's that, is that be a thing from Dan Welch. Uh, uh, S S Calante. Oh, okay. S -S Stimpy launch. So somebody knows me very well. I used to do Stimpy launch. Uh, <laughs> it's probably Dan. Dan, hopefully, if that's probably you. If it's not, uh, very few people know. I used to like uh, get super excited when. Uh, so Stimpy launch is a reference to Ren and Stimpy show, the Gritty Kitty contest when uh, Stimpy was watching the contest and got real excited. And so I would say the most uh, the last time I played a game that was a Stimpy launch was probably Breath of the Wild. And playing Zelda Breath of the Wild, when I was playing it, I just couldn't stop playing. It was spring break Great. Of last yeah. year, and I used my entire spring break playing it. And it's got, amazing how you, I couldn't yeah. stop thinking about it when yeah. I was not playing it. It's been yeah. a long time since I had a game made me feel that way. Got halfway through, stopped playing. And it was just, it's just one of those things. Like, my time ran out, Yeah. and I, I choose to do YouTube streaming and gaming and, and uh, you know, live not live videos, but videos on YouTube as my game time. And so my challenge as a family man is like breaking down that time and having time 40 hours to dump into a game. I love the game. Yeah. I just ran out of time playing it. And so I need to get back into it. Part of the problem is I played it on the Wii U. And so there's, I don't believe there's a way to transfer your save file over to the Switch. I probably would want to play it in the Switch. I see. And so it's, it's one of those things. I have the Wii U hooked up, but, you know, I, I now want to play the Switch version. So, yeah. yeah. We've got 265 people watching. Woo! Thank you so much. Um, I want to make this worth your while. Again, uh, I'm a little tired, just to let you know. So, <laughs> uh, it took many, many hours to get the gamer in the way it is. I know it's packed, but this is the final evolution before museum. This is what it's going to look like until I, 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 I get something else. And so, uh, doing the best I can to have it organized. Here's a Sega wall, and uh, you can see it all the way it goes down. This is all uh, here. specifically. A little, a little Musha here. Oh, Musha. It's complete too. Here, let's open that up. Let's see it. It's, it's nice. Yeah. Let's show some stuff. In. All right. Any Sega? Any Sega fan? Oh, let's show this. What's this? What is, what is that? What's this? What's that? Can anybody tell me what this is? Not looking at it. I, I I don't know what it is. Yeah. How about how about Julie? 
I, I, I don't know what it is. Outback Joey Heartbeat System. So technically it's not part of the set because it took hardware that was the Genesis but its own unique controllers. And this is a non-working card. I have to be honest here. This card doesn't work anymore, but it, I do have it in my collection. And I uh, never could get it to work. Really bummed about that. It did work at one point. Doesn't anymore. <laughs> but uh, I have it. I have, I'm happy to have the cart. It's the only item of Sega that I don't have a box for. It's technically not part of the set, so that's why I say I still have a complete set. But yeah. That's that's super rare. It's the stadium events. It's the stadium events of Sega Genesis. So it's really really tough to get. Um, let's see your uh, let's see your uh, lunar on the Sega CD oh, yeah. and what's what's notable about it. Okay. So I am friends with. Uh, so uh, she goes by uh, Jackie Corn now, but she was Jackie Powers back in the day, and she is signed. She just signed my uh, Lunar, and I've talked about this, I think, on a previous video. I don't know if I did on my own channel or something else. But uh, anyway, she was the voice of Null and Ruby and Lunar 2. And so it's really cool. She signed my stuff. Uh, really, she's good friends with my wife. It's a weird story. So we were friends in high school, and then she went to a private Christian college, became friends with my wife. And so it's just a small world. Anyways really neat that she signed uh i had her sign my uh games and so she's a great friend and she's uh she did a lot of voice work for work and designs and so yeah it's neat to see that even with the remakes too in the playstation uh i can show you that back up here so even in the remakes she did the voice work on that so victor uh, uh president of Work and Designs got some of the original voice work and yep. then added it to the to the PlayStation one. By the way, the cases, if people are wondering where do you get the cases for anything in my room, it's Retro Game Production. And uh, they, they have great stuff. He He's never asked for me to do a plug, but he's been great to work with. And, you know, he he's, he's provided me with a lot of cases for my game room. And uh, I'm happy to give him business just because he's always came through. He does video. He does cases for all the odd sizes too, mm -hmm. like NES Classic, uh, Funko Pop, all those uh, all those weird boxes, all the Wii U collector boxes and stuff. Yeah, it's great. You got a uh, four ninety nine uh, donation from Chris Thompson, who says, "Going to send another shout out to my uh, two year old son who is watching this with me now, along with my newborn who is three days old today." Thank you so much, Chris. Very nice. Congratulations. Really happy. Uh, there's nothing like having a new addition to your family. It's it is exhilarating. Uh, it can be exciting, scary, and there's nothing like having. I I think it's easier to have two kids if they can play with each other, right? Do you agree? Well, I mean, yeah. for me, it was very much. Uh, I was so much more confident with the second than I was. Now I think about you know once you have two, you you can't believe how easy it was with one. Yeah, and I. Yeah, so and you also really happy for donation. You also have a uh, oh. yeah. John Riggs uh, sent a two dollar donation saying saying to show the apology letter for that Genesis game. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so Riggs, man, great to see you, man. All right, then we're gonna go in another room and eat this Canadian food, this Canadian snacks. All right, apology letter. All right, Riggs, great to hear from you, man. All right. So, this is a variation. Let's see if I can get out here. A variation of uh, of a of a of a game. So, uh, right. So it's that game was the first version. This game was the second version. And so, there's not many of these variations out there. I don't know why they changed the. Oh yeah, they talk about it. So, in here. In here, the, the, the manual is the same, but this is not. Oh, okay. So, Dear Raiden Triad Customer. And it says here, By now you have noticed that the package of our cover design varies from the manual and cart label design. The original package design did not adequately convey the attributes and attitude of this intense action shooting game. As a result, <laughs> we have repackaged the game with the intent of attracting a wider audience. Gamers who otherwise would gamers 
uh, would, would have passed by the supersonic shooter. We apologize for the inconsistency. That's the most awesome apology yeah. letter ever. Thank you, Riggs. Apology for... ex- accepted, Big Net. Yeah. So, I, I, have, I have a quick question yeah. for you. Yeah, what's up? Do you have uh, the the glove that came with Aero Blasters? I do not. I do not have the glove. No glove. That's, that's pretty pretty hard to get. All as right. In the other room, we're going to do Canadian food. Yep, let's Woo! do it. Now, Corey can't have this. He's, he's, he's being good and healthy. I'm not. I'm going to eat it. Let's <laughs> eat it. Let's go in here. All right, here we go. Woo! All right, so my Canadian friends and brothers and sisters is cheesies. So this is real Canadian cheddar cheese. All right. Mm. All right. This is an American having cheesies for the first time. All right. So what I'd say is that it's a lot crunchier than Cheetos. It has like, you know when you bite in a Cheeto and it's like soft? This is kind of more crunchy. Mm, this is good. You've got to eat the whole bag as fast as you can. Oh my god. Daddy, <laughs> do you want one of these? <laughs> Come on in. Why look, it's the Eternal Star Hancock. Hello. <laughs> okay, so cheesies, huh? Mm-hmm. Where did these come from? Somebody send them? Yeah, they were purchased from Canada. My friend's up there. George, and I forget the other name. I so, I'm so sorry, but anyways. I can't hear over this. They're uh, more condensed than Cheetos. Mm-hmm. They're Crunchy. Less, less airy, yeah. That's good. Mm. The we real like cheddar cheese. We like cheesies. Yeah, and a little bit more um, real cheese flavoring than... All right, honest truth. I had raspberry cola. I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I drank <laughs> it. I loved it. So, so far, and then I had the Dove. There's like a spongy chocolate... Like candy bar, it was like three musketeers, but better. It was all chocolate. So so far, Canada is three for three. You get to try the raspberry soda. All right. That's good. All right, Wonder Bar. Okay, Cadbury. Oh, it's got to be good. Mm. This killing man. Is this it killing? is. It oh, is a little man. bit, you know, but oh, it's man. it's okay. Right. Okay, I've 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 come too far. <laughs> okay. Let me see the cheesy. Oh man, cheesies are good. Yum. Okay. Wow. Alright, this is my wife's jam. Yeah. That is so good. Oh my gosh. Is this from Canada? It's like too? a Beirut and Butterfinger oh, kind of baby. That sounds oh, Canada. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Sorry, Corey. That's <laughs> Should I eat it over here? Sorry, man. That's really good. There's something about like the way the caramel's wrapped around oh my the nugget. <laughs> oh, I also had a caramel. So oh, yeah. taste it before? Oh. Okay, this is Kaylee. No, turn around. I'm gonna try it. It's not wardrobe. Oh. Situation. You wanna try cheesy or do you wanna try this? Alright. Let's try it. He's representing the dab cat. Alright. Alright. Dab cats. Okay. Yeah, regulation. So tell Corey right there what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Alright. Thank you. Okay, Can I try chips? Here. No, no, no. No, no, no. Here. I'm, I'm, Come I think we're running short on time. Come on. <laughs> oh, you're on your All right. Here you go. She's like, I like this gig. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks in the game. Uh, there's yeah. a question earlier. It says, uh, how many Sega console exclusive games that's only still on Sega consoles that you have total? I don't know if that's... Okay, so how many Sega consoles... Exclusives? How many Sega console exclusive games that's only still on the Sega consoles that you still have total? I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm, I, no I'm not quite understanding. I'm mm. All right, one more. Okay, that's why I thought about the Winter Bar. I ate it. I wanted to make sure Corey wasn't struggling. So. Yeah, it's, you know. I'm sorry, man. It's okay, it's okay. All right, all dress chips. Now. I was told that these might have been limited release in the States, but they're not around here. So, all dress chips, which means looks like they put a bunch of stuff in powder form on ruffles. Ah. Mm. 
It's like a rainbow flavor. <laughs> um, hmm. I mean, I can't imagine not liking a chip. One? No, I'm not. Uh, I can't. I can't. You know, as, as much as I'd love I love that one, but I mean, I can't imagine disliking a flavor of potato chip. Mm. Uh, someone was asking earlier about your Streets of Rage 2 variants. I assume uh, one of them is like the re regular release. Another one is the not for sale, resale in inclusion. Yeah. I don't know what the third one would be. Yeah, so I'll talk about it. Alright, so the short answer... That's cool, that's cool show. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Alright. I'm trying to be good with my socks, so if you see the socks... Don't be offended. I'm just trying to be good and not keep dirty out dirt of out of the game. All right. Really quick, you got a two dollar uh, oh. donation from Bubba Bubba D Matt A twelve. Okay. It says just said John appraiser of antique roadshow gamer edition. Oh nice appraiser on. All right. Yeah. All right. So normal version. This is the version probably in the best shape, mm -hmm. and so that's probably why it's on this wall. This version was a pack-in, and that's why it's on the wall. So there's really only two versions. This is a special version. I got this on eBay a long time ago. And you're probably, you're thinking, well, what's so special about this? It says Genesis number 70. Okay. Nothing special there, right? Except that it was part of the Sunsoft game library. And so this is pretty uh. common back in the day that game companies would have other games uh, other companies in a library so people could play or rent or just to test or even just to play to figure out you know what's something from this game that we can incorporate in ours i mean there's a lot of different reasons why they had game libraries other than just having games to play so sometimes things were reverse engineered not that sunsoft did that other companies did that though <laughs> <laughs> i saw it earlier i just saw, saw that uh Reggie said he wants me to tell try that he said said RGB and I'm wondering if uh Doug from Limited Run put him up to to saying that. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, it was, it was kind of a joke when we were at Missouri yeah. Game Con last year. Yeah, so I'm glad to get some of your stream, Reggie. Reggie, great channel. John Riggs, thank you for the donation. And and he's got a great channel too. Uh, hopefully, I answered your question. And all right, any other questions? Have is there an it? air raid repro attached to the door? Is there an air raid? Is yes. there? Yes, there is. Yes. So real quick on that, I'm putting this back in a collector case. So yes, it's just a magnet. It's not even a game. It's just a magnet, and I got that at Atari age, and so I just essentially. I uh, just wanted to have it for fun. The air raid, the actual air raid card, doesn't look anything like that. It's so it's over here. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Oh, I see. Now, the story behind Air Raid is that a gentleman online who did not post it, his, what Air Raid, Air Raid, the actual cart, doesn't have Air Raid on it. And so, if uh, a lot of people have never seen the box before. So, whoever said that online knew what they're talking about because for years the box did not surface. And so, Air Raid is not on the actual, it's just this picture right here, but Air Raid is only on the box. And so I thought that was kind of interesting that we called it air raid for years, but never saw a box. And the only way to, to know that is that someone had a box somewhere and started calling it air raid. You are so close to 300 concurrent viewers. I feel like oh, we can yeah. need to keep on going a little bit yeah. longer and see if we can, yeah. Yeah. can do it. Yeah. All right. So, all right, let's keep it going. We can keep going as long as we want, right? Even though I have a yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, all right, let's do this. Um, someone's asking what it smells like in here. And I feel <laughs> like it kind of smells like, you said like a like a library kind like of. Like a library. Yeah, I, it just it it smells very new in here. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and it's it smells better than it did. And yeah. So a lot of it is uh, there is sometimes when you have aged items, especially a lot of paper items, it's going to have that library smell. If yeah. If you've ever gone to like an old bookstore, it's got some of that. It's it's less funky than it was, but yeah, it has that kind of like aged paper smell. I think, and so I try to limit. If something is odor and stuff, I try to do something about it. Uh, a recent, so if you have stuff that stuff with uh, smoking issues, uh, a great uh, thing that I learned about was uh, dryer sheets. When you put dryer sheets like the snuggle in a Ziploc bag. I had an mm -hmm. Apple controller, an Apple uh, joystick. That, oh man, it smelled bad. I thought there's no way I'm gonna get that smell out. Nope, 
put a dryer sheet in, and boom, it was gone. So, yeah. Uh, you got a ten dollar donation from a uh, uh, skull shirt shirtugal TCG. Just says, okay. "Here is money. It is yours. That is all." Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Um, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. It means the world to me. Um, again, I'm new to doing these. I have the camera flipped the other way. Hopefully, it's a better quality. Um, thank you for everybody being patient with this. Uh, the, you know, not, you know, not be a little bit more. Uh, discipline moving forward anyways i just i'm just new doing this so just checking it out so <laughs> yeah all right other questions spring win uh, what is your all-time favorite games okay so everybody knows robotron 2084 is one of my favorite games i'm going to talk about something that i haven't talked about a lot so this is a game and, it, and unfortunately it's kind of it's kind of uncommon oh would be, Raw would be free to play though yeah and a kickmaster and so kickmaster is a great Kind of like a hand-to-hand -hand combat meets Castlevania. Ah, oh, you know who recommended that? Are you familiar with the YouTuber uh, Michael B. the Game Genie? Yes. He did a video years ago about his his uh, NES Hidden Gems, and that was on it. All right. Other favorite games. So Kickmaster, high on my list. I beat, <clears throat> excuse me, I beat that with my good friend Jonathan Rose. I think it's amazing. Uh, other other favorite games. That's some of them. I'm going to surprise you. Tecmo Super Bowl played a lot of this. Of course. You know? Can't you do like a like a 90-yard field goal in that game? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. That's what's, what's yeah. fun about it. I mean, I can understand that. My, yeah. my favorite and the only football game I really like is Madden 92 on the Genesis. Oh, yeah. That's Specifically the 92. Right? The ambulance comes well, that's, on that's, that's the reason I love it. All right. Ice hockey. Huge fan of NES ice hockey because it plays like a, like a speed version of Pong. And I really think that they nailed it. It was a lot of fun on this. So I'm really happy to have uh, this as one of my all-time favorite classics. All right, I showed some Nintendo stuff. Let me show one more. And I'll j j jump on some Sega Genesis games I really like. You know, I'm a big Power Blade 2 fan. And Popeye. So actually, I really like Popeye for like a classic arcade game. And Power Blade 2, a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Pop Popeye being a pretty, pretty affordable black box game. So if you're looking for something that's, uh, you know, a classic arcade game, it doesn't get talked about a lot. Donkey Kong kind of, you know, of that time period gets a lot more attention. But I think I think Popeye is just as good. It's a little bit slower gameplay, but I, I enjoy it. It's hard getting through that all four four screens. So, yeah. All right. Sega Genesis. Let's, let's roll. Uh, I'm seeing that some people are saying, like, wait, is is uh, M-Leg with John? It's just, just, just Corey. Yeah. Try... Is uh, we're going to San Francisco on Thursday and tries meeting me there for another uh, project. All right, Shadowrun, Sega Genesis, really great um, cyberpunk style RPG. Better uh, than better than the Super NES yes, version. Yes, yes, this I think the superior version. And I had a discussion with a programmer a long time ago, and unfortunately, I I was taking notes and I lost those notes, but. It was an amazing game. I really think that this showed, uh, and I like that it was so different than the Super Nintendo one. The Super Nintendo yeah. one was more vanilla, had a different kind of perspective. I didn't like it as much. This one was grittier and darker. Yeah. Like that. Both fairly pricey these days. Yes. Both versions are. Yeah, Skeleton Crew. Again, I'm a big fan of the Diablo series. This is more action-oriented, but it's a two-player game. Skeleton Crew is a lot of fun. Uh, again, a pretty hard game to find, unfortunately. Uh, for a game that nobody talks about, well, not nobody, but uh, isn't talked about enough, I'm looking for it. Really quick, you had another uh, $10 donation, oh. donation from uh, Escalante. It says, oh. I think it's almost time for some two-player dual Robotron action. Oh, yeah. I got a special controller for that, too. All right, I'm looking for a specific game, and let's see here. Don't you hate the... the Genesis games when we're in cardboard boxes at the very end of the run. Yeah, Isn't it? Hate it's that. so hate that. Hate that. All right. Great specifically one. Fantasy Star 4. Great one me nuts. Player game. Corey, are you familiar with this game? Uh no, but I mean I'm guessing that it's probably a fighter. Yeah, Amazing Saga Mutant Fighter. And it's a brawl it's kind of a side scrolling hack and slash. Oh, uh, okay. And then at the end it's like a fighting it turns into a fighting game. Oh, very interesting. Cool. Very cool, based on an anime or a Magna uh, series in Japan. So, really cool. You got a, two, a great game. $2 donation from uh, uh, 
Bubba Dmat again, saying, uh, got any funny story from game hunting? Oh, yeah. So, my funniest game story hunting is I went in the middle of nowhere in Chico. Chico, California. I was with a, a buddy of mine. And we were looking for, uh, there was, you know, an ad for, like, Neo Geo MVS stuff. Never found it. You know, it's one of those things, like, sometimes people put stuff out there and it doesn't, doesn't exist just to mess with people. Ran into a guy, he had a little, like a cockatiel bird, eating bird seed off of his, like, c cigarette box. And the bird was eating there, and he wanted to show us his junk store. And he was, like, trying to sell, like, paper maps. And he was just weird, but it was entertaining. And, like, we, we essentially stopped game hunting just to hear this guy talk, because he was just so strange. He had an odd stuff in his store. And, you know, there was, like, the, 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 the part of Chico where we're at, I don't know... It was on the outskirts, but really strange. Like it was like a secondhand shop. I don't remember the name of it, but it was it was near the Chico area. It might have not been in city limits, but yeah, it was really strange. It's like we just we sat there listening to him talk, and like it was a game hunt that went nowhere, but it was entertaining. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you had a uh, two dollar donation from uh, uh, Sentel Bolton, who says Sega fan, watch your channel daily. Don't need cable. Ooh, awesome, Sega. Um. Yeah. There's a retro guy asks, uh, how long have you been a collector for? About 30 years. And so 25, I know I'm 42. So, you know, I don't technically say I was collecting until like, you know, maybe 14, 15. That's when I was earning my own money and be getting more games than I could play. And so I was really just kind of starting with Nintendo. I started collecting Nintendo and then moved on to Sega Genesis where I purchased my own system. I was earning my own money. And so I would say, you know, earning my own games really got me collecting because you know my from parents said hey if you earn it you can buy it i was like yes mowing <laughs> lawns washing cars waxing mowing worked, lawns was my, my my big way too i worked my butt off and, that, and that's how i raised money and i i looked for work i didn't i didn't sit around saying gosh there's nothing to do you know i didn't get this collection by you know i worked i worked hard you know definitely over over time and stuff just you know, saving and, and being reasonable with my money. And Someone was saying, can you, uh, can you uh, ask him about the Nights in the Dreams Dreamcast game is right below your waist. It's actually, I think he's talking about the Saturn one, the one with the, uh, yep. the analog controller. Yep. Yep. That's the version I have, too. Yep. And by the way, it's like a prototype Dreamcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Prototype Dreamcast controller. That's where they got the, the, the idea from. It's kind of interesting because the cable, like the cord comes off. It like, kind of detaches yeah. from it. It's... I, I kind of hate the controller, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, Knights is an amazing game, but you know. It's a standalone. Cause I think it didn't come with a. It didn't come with a case. I don't believe. It's it's a, just a regular jewel it's case. Just a paper. I think it's just a paper case in here. Yep. And then this is. Well, no, this should have a jewel. It's just like a regular CD size jewel case. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this, so this is a full size one. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know the the variations. I mean, really, I think that the one with the controller is worth a bit more these days. The but controller, I think people are sought it seek after the controller. Yeah. I don't know what other analog... I, there's other games that work with it, too. Oh, my gosh. That's tight. Uh, you got another $5, $5 donation from uh, Escalante saying, because video games. Okay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I'll figure that out later. It's not Andrew Smith right says, let's see some working design Saturn titles, and I can't agree right. more. Okay. We're going to design Saturn Tales. All right. Oh. I'm going to show you something special. Okay. So this is Iron Storm. Okay. Mm hmm But it's an employee copy from working his Oh, my. I know. I'm killing it, right? Well, I mean, Iron Storm is probably the cheapest out of all those. Promotional copy and not for resale. And so they would stamp these and give them the, to employees, I think, back in the day. Anyways, it's really nice shape. Look at the manning on that. Looks like it's that's the first time it's ever been opened, probably. Yeah. Great. Great game. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... If you like strategy games, it's I really good. Games. I love the uh, the kind of cutscenes it has. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Dragon Force. Um, We got another... Oh, you go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep this. There's another $5 donation. Right. I will go through and... Uh, yeah. All right. Dragon, Dragon Force. Yep, Dragon Force. Yep. So didn't some copies of that come with a like a RAM cart, I believe. 
like not not a ram cart but a uh, like a like a like a oh a sticker that's right for like the the backup for the backup yes. memory yes came with stickers Albert Odyssey cases are original too yeah working to, our networking designs uh limited run is going to be selling some replacement cases cool. yeah nice that they're doing that shining wisdom i got shining wisdom at missouri game con last year along with this next one it's important to know that sega saturn games are also can work with sega cd and also playstation long box so it's like three collecting uh, getting yep. cases for three consoles and the sega ages yep that's a great it's a great collection but the uh, I think the Outrun is missing the extra music. Yes. There's some there's some issues with with that and. But it's just I think they ran out of space. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they. This is one of those things where I don't know if I'm putting that back right. That's close enough. All right. Well, your five dollar donation says, "Do you allow private tours of your collection?" I'd love the opportunity to see if I'm ever in the area. You know my time with my family is pretty pretty limited <laughs> and uh you know doing these live streams is my way of sharing uh probably not if i knew, didn't know you or something or had it like a purpose and that's just to keep a boundary between me and my and my in my private life and so right. right now uh time is really precious and so i'm already kind of stretched in and and so out of respect for my family i'm, I'm probably not going to allow that at this time um, you had a $2 donation saying, how big is your indie and homebrew collection? Uh, it's pretty big. So, <laughs> uh, all right. I'll just say one, one box of 90S homebrews and we'll wrap it up. All right. You're at 321, by the way. Oh, sweet. Okay. This is just indie, like, okay. What is that? The Sega base, uh, base system was supposedly something... Uh, sent to uh, retail stores as like a demo before the box was finalized. And it's oh, okay. Canada. Pretty, pretty uncommon. The base system being the first version of the Sega Master System before they called it the Master System because that's where they got the power base converter from. For right. Is it? But is it? Does it look the same? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because I I talked to somebody recently who has a pre, like a prototype Master System. It's like a, it's a white. You mess. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's like there's very few of them. Okay, never seen anything like that. Yeah, I mean it's Final Fantasy. Okay, so this is Final Fantasy Seven. The it's a really nice polished version. This is pretty hard to get. All right, so homebrews, Halloween '85, <laughs> Halloween '86. Of course, I got. Uh, Swords and Runes. That's from uh, Soul Goose Productions. I have Tortoises. I wonder where that's from. That was an awesome show. <laughs> so, Calitz Gamers. I got. This is probably my craziest thing. So, Study Hall by Kahan Games, I think is how you pronounce it. So, Study Hall. This is a special Calitz Gamers edition. This was in the silent auction, and I, I, I won it. And this is one of one. It's a special like collector's box. He does these for all his games, and mm -hmm. and uh, he graciously donated that. That's my probably my most special homebrew in my collection. Um, got a bunch of other stuff. There's just a bunch of bunch of stuff here. I'm not gonna be able to go through it all. Uh, Legend of Alia, Beer Slinger. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ton of stuff in here. Tons, tons of the incident. Um, I could go on and on. But anyways, maybe for a later time, we'll do some more. So, yeah, last questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, someone said, uh, wants you to tell their friend, say, tell my friend that the Saturn is better than the N64, please. How, what, what are your thoughts on the N64? I feel like it's the least essential system that I own. So, okay, so... Honestly speaking about the N64, the N64 has a divisive, it's, it's divisive because there's a lot of people that think, you know, they see the Monday graphics or think, gosh, you know, the games could be better, yada, yada. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of controversy with the system. Do you look at what the console did back in the day 
was it you know i i think it's i think it hasn't aged great but it's got some great stuff golden eye mario 64 rogue squadron mm -hmm. uh episode one racer gauntlet f-zero star fox legend of zelda i think if you look at saturn saturn has kind of the same problem where i think other than the 2d because the saturn gets saved by the 2d artwork in the games the saturn was super successful overseas i think both consoles have their benefits you you play them for different reasons definitely i would say as a console as what's better i would say saturn okay. you know n64 is great i would rather play saturn like a dungeons and dragons yeah. collection with somebody 2d fighters the shooters the imports like the saturn to me is a better console mm -hmm. the n64 is great i like it more than most people but even i admit that you know there was a lot of problems with it that it was muddy murky there was uh, a lot of issues with that i i have the uh, hdmi mod to my n64 that fixes some of that Oh yeah, doesn't fix all, doesn't fix all of it though. Well, the so. the uh, the D blur does does a pretty yeah. good job. I mean, I think it makes it a lot more palatable for me to play yeah. personally. But yeah, but I mean, would you agree? I mean, like so between the two, Saturn. I have to go to Saturn. Oh, I yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you know what? When the 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 sixty four came out when I was a senior in high school, and I felt yeah. like it just didn't resonate with me in the same way. I was yeah. too busy playing. You know, yeah, Saturn was. Good. I, I played. I played on the, the PS one more, more, but the Saturn to me. I think is a better console. I think that yeah. would be silly to, to not answer it like that. So, yeah. I mean, I think a lot, a lot of that would be, is kind of judged by a person's age. Yeah. I think that, you know, a lot of people that have yeah. love for the, a lot of like deep love for the N64 are people that were probably a little bit younger when and it came up, out. And grew up with it. I mean, yeah. and, and that's, that's the thing. And, but, but yeah, that's uh that's my answer. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that concludes. We're about ready to end the stream. We just want to thank everybody for, tuning in and stuff uh thank you so much and again mm -hmm. i plan on doing uh this every tuesday at seven looks like it was a successful time for people i plan on doing more of it thank you so much this is the immortal john and thank you and take care uh, how do i stop there we go